Day 500, yeah! What's up, everybody? It's day 500. I'm celebrating by wearing a wig today. I feel kind of funny, though. I'll tell you that. What's up, sound dogs? Oh, forgot about the sound. So there might be a little weird watermark or something. Game show is giving me a crazy message. Yeah, this is Vel. this is in in honor of Vel. How you doing today, Salad? I'm trying to pretend like it's totally normal to have this hair. It's, it's like you know, what would it, what would life be like if my hair was actually like this? It's hard. It's hard to stay in character. Today I'll be fixing some more bugs. That's what happens when you release a game to like, you know, another group of people. Doing pretty good? You doing good? Nice, man. Hey, banging. Okay, so yes, 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 yes. So since I've been releasing this right to like a, you know this new group of people are playing Songbringer, getting lots of bugs, lots of lots of feedback, trying to fix crashes, trying to fix input bugs and things like that. One of the big ones yesterday on yesterday's stream, if you're paying attention to yesterday's stream, I was trying to fix this one where the meditation door wouldn't open. What's up, Rocket Bunny? It turns out. That was a timing overflow bug, so, or not a time, an integer, a signed integer overflow. So it was crazy. It was the most obscure, unreproducible bug. But basically, if you played the game on Windows only for like longer than a half an hour, sometimes you would get this bug. You're zero. You, everybody starts at zero. Hell yeah. If you're a programmer, you start at zero. Rocket Buddy, how you doing, man? No, I'm not wearing a wig. This is what my hair is like normally. All those other times, that's what my hair, I was wearing a wig then. So, I'm going to go reproduce that bug again today and fix the rest of my game engine to make sure that it works even if that happens. That's my first goal today. Because I'm trying to be a little proactive about these bugs, right? Get them fixed before they even happen. So this is what I did to fix it yesterday, right? I casted these values to unsign long. What happened was essentially this current time dot TV sec value gets is a long value, which means it's signed, which means it could be negative, which means that on Windows, sometimes your time becomes a negative value. And there was this one line of code inside the door system where if where it was comparing it and making sure a value was greater than zero. You don't believe me? <laughs> Good. You shouldn't. All right. So let's go reproduce that bug again. This time, I'm just going to do it by making, I'm just going to cast this value to, to be a negative value. So. This is how I did it on Windows. Basically, I, I took this TV seg value and added int max, which basically will cause it to overflow to, for the sign value to become a negative value when it gets all casted and stuff like that. So that's why that's why the door wouldn't open is because the the timing was negative. It actually thought it was negative time. If zero is 1970, this was like 1940. Crazy. Illogical, crazy. It's craziness. It was a stack overflow. <laughs> oh. So let's do this this way. We'll just be, okay, we'll pretend like this is a regular value. Just pretend. And then uh, we'll cast it to be negative. So we'll use fabs. 
and make it a negative fabs. And we're gonna be wrenching, we're gonna run into immediately run into bugs. Can't compute. Error, error, error. Bugs. Error. Error. We see we're running into one right here. It's just a black screen. What the hell? Really? That was fast, right? Sake fault null D reference. There's your bug, you guys. You're just dereferencing a null pointer. See that? We're totally black screen. Let's go to yeah, and we want, yeah, yep, it's day, well, it's not actually day 500, but this is the 500th stream. Five hundred freaking streams, man. Let's go to two, 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 three, two. Sounds like a good place to be. April Fool's Day. There should be a fake bug where sometimes the game just shows a flashing gray screen. <laughs> yes, yeah, like the nest. Oh no, your hamster's on the way out. Did he get all stressed out from the, the plane ride over? Oh man. Oh yeah, this is a pretty this is pretty interesting. We just got total blackness. Oh, you just might be moving slow, hopefully. Alright, yesterday it wasn't doing this black screen bug. What the hell's going on here? What the hell? Okay, we need the log file. Not this log file. Mate, build, debug, log. LDJ, I'm coming up this weekend. Well, here we go. There's some problems, right? Game scene creation took negative 1.85 seconds. World creation, negative 500 milliseconds. So it looks like it was able to create the world, but it's just, now it's just a black screen. Why is it a black screen? Where is it going black? Okay, so did it actually exit cleanly? Let's find out. Let's see if I'm looking at the right file. Let's run it. We'll get this whole black screen. I'll switch it into this log file and see if it, uh... He's a dwarf hamster. Oh, he's a dwarf, eh? Dwarf hamster? Oh, man. All right, so yeah, this is definitely the right file. Now if I go here and I go Command Q and it does add this game exiting cleanly line. Okay, so it's running. It created the area. Everything is everything is apparently fine, but it's just um hmm. Let's let's um I'm gonna go do this a different way. I'm gonna launch VMware. Do this in Windows because I know I'm able to reproduce this in Windows a little bit easier. Like this. 
mm, like this. The stream season up. Oh no, really? There's no. So weird. Game show told me when I started it today, it's all your updates expired and I paid for an entire year. Stupid software. When you pay, the, the feeling you get when you pay for a piece of software an entire year in advance and then it tells you that you haven't paid. That's the feeling I have right now. Hey, what's up, Kovarni? All right, yeah. He's got to make it till Christmas. Is he going to get a Christmas gift? Does he got that to look forward to? All right, so we're going to do this in Windows. I got the timer all set up. Let's build it. Yep, yep, I'm wearing this wig in honor of Vel, but it's day 500, baby. 500th stream. I gotta do something. I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating with showing my real hair. This is my real hair. This is how my hair really is. All 499 of those other streams, that was my fake wig hair. Okay, we got the code ready. Let's see what happens. I'm adding int max minus 1500 to the TV sec, which will overflow the value, give us a negative time, and this should act weird at the very least. Hello, Dark Og. This runs really slow because I'm running VMware and I'm streaming and I'm trying to correct a bug here. But yes, it loads. All right. So after a moment, I think what happened last time was that I wouldn't be able to use there. Oh no, it happens right away. So I can use my input as long as as long as I'm in the game if I go if I go and use a menu it suddenly it stops working I can't oh wait there it worked what it all of a sudden it started working this is weird so weird ah oh, so weird ay yay yay Okay, but I at least need to see some input controller verbosity. It's really crippled, huh? Is anybody else having problems with the stream today? I think it's this game, sh it's this message it sent me at the beginning. It's all, you, you didn't pay for this, but, uh, but I did. Why did this happen to happen on day 500, huh? Game show? Bitching out on me? Hmm, well... Is it M something to do with the CPU usage? No issues, no issues. Okay, alright. Well, good. That's good to know. Alright. I'm going to pretend that there are no issues then. I'm trying to have a little productive stream here. Okay, let's set up um, controller verbosity, settings Mac, settings Windows, I mean, controller verbosity 1. And I'll go here and run it again. This is going to take forever again, but. We'll see the controller. 
Oh, I know. It sucks, man. Okay, so if you're just tuning into the stream, I'm working on a game here called Songbringer. And uh, what's going on lately with Songbringer is that it's it's getting closer and closer to release, but it's still quite a ways away. Um, uh, so I just upgraded a bunch of people that have been waiting a long time for Songbringer. I upgraded them so they can play the game. They can play the beta version. So this is the beta version. And... Um, I'm getting lots and lots of bug reports. So one of the bug reports was that these boss doors wouldn't open. I fixed that, but as a consequence of that, I figured out something else in the code of the game that really could be better, and it's the way this signed integer value can overflow sometimes, which is crazy obscure, but if it can happen on a few people's computers, then I should fix it everywhere, right? So what, if I go into the menu now and I press down, what happened there? It went immediately to 2... Oh, it is working. It's just that I had to hold it down. Hmm. So why was it not working last night? What if I add int max, an entire int max? Flood, what's up, Flood? Yeah, Kovarni, I don't know. I forget who that was that committed to do that. To do the Russian translation. I, sh I need to look that up. Figure out who that was. There's a few people that they were like, Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna translate Songbringer. And I gave them basically, you know, the alpha access and um, put their name in gold on the game. But then I haven't heard from them since. So, I don't know. I got something on my head? What are you talking about? What? Something on my head? So I'm fixing bugs today. Just fixing bugs. Oh, something else I'll be doing this week is like working on controller stuff. I'm going to work on like getting rumble going. That's going to be cool. Shit, maybe I'll even start that now. If I can't, oh, that's kind of exciting. Shoot. I might start Rumble right now. Okay, so now we've got int max. Really, this should be failing or something should be failing. So. I guess it's just running at such a slow frame rate inside this VMware or whatever that it's like taking a second for it to go to the menu. <laughs> What's that? It stayed all glitched out. Ah. Uh... That's not helping. This is taking too long. But I will keep the should I keep this up now? I'm going to call I'm going to pause this. Let's go back to the Mac version and try and figure this out here faster. Um. So let's go turn on render verbosity. So on Mac, what I'm trying here is I'm, I'm using a negative time value. This is essentially what, what the bug was yesterday. It was producing a negative time value. So I'm going to try producing a negative time value on, on Mac and try and fix as many bugs that will happen because of that. Even though I've got some code, which makes it so it, it never produces a negative value anymore. I still feel like, oh my god, there's things in my code base that could produce a negative value. It just seems all wrong. Peeing horse, what happened to Vim? I'm still doing Vim, but just not today. 
it's been kind of a crazy week this week, launching the you know this this version out to so many people. So I'm getting tons of bugs, and because I'm not as comfortable in Vim yet, um, I'm just switching back to Xcode this week so I can get these bugs handled as swiftly as possible without any delay. Right, so we want render velocity two. Let's see what goes, what happens now. We're gonna get a black screen, but at least I'll have render verbosity on this time, so I can see um, the like the frame rate and a few other things, just to make sure that the screen and the oh, see that it's not even. Ah, oh, this is a total black screen. Like, is it even making sounds? This is so hard to put headphones on with my regular re real hair. Everything will be fine. Okay. I can hear the system volume, but no, nothing from... What? What about debug keys? Oh, hey, hey, check it out. We got something on the screen. It is at least doing the time value there. But it's not making any sounds. So it's almost as if there's nothing at all running. I wonder what would happen if we try to skip to the intro. Oh, hey, there we go, we got something. What's that red dot in the middle? Oh, is this seriously? There's actually a, a hero in the middle of the screen? FPS zero, tick zero, oh! I see what's going on. Oh my God, if there's a negative time value, the tick can fail. Oh my God, this is this should be Pretty fundamental here. Frame time. So we got, let's say that, let's say, let's say current time is negative. For some reason, we're getting a negative time value. You're getting buffering too now? What? What are you talking about? Why does this look like Java? I don't know, have you been having Java dreams? Have you been studying Java? Are you learning Java? By the way, this is not Java. Okay, so if the current time is negative, right? The last update time equals zero, last update time equals current time, that would be okay. Frame time though, equals current time minus last update time. This right here, this needs to be guaranteed. Fabs. Guaranteed. There we go, this should fix a lot. So FPS counter goes up. FPS timer plus equals the frame time, which is now guaranteed to be positive. FPS timer, FPS, FPS counter, last update time, detect this frame. And then frame time gets clamped deed. Okay, so that would work too if it's negative, or if, yeah, if current time was negative. Wait, where else are we using current time? It's better now? Right on. Oh, you're asking why it looks like Java? I don't know, man. Sleep timer. Sleep timer. Okay, that would also... This is all based on frame time. 
wait a minute. So I'm not using current time anywhere other than right here. So I'm going to make this a block so that it's clear to me at a glance that I'm not using current time beyond this. But double frame time is also is going to be outside of this block. So double frame time equals start with float epsilon. There. So that's, that's clear, right? Now we've got current time is inside this block. So I know I'm not using it anywhere else in here. And in fact, if I needed to, now that this is a block, I could put it inside a function if I really wanted to. But that's just going to incur some function call overhead. So that's not, I don't want that. Let's see what happens this time. Your hamster's fine. Oh, that's so great. So, oh, sweet. Now we're ticking. Yes. And the entities are all running. This is good. No, long after, long after. Okay, so if I, now if I skip the intro, let's see what happens. Can it load the game now? Yeah, I can load the game now, sweet! Oh, seriously, that was such a big bug fix right there. All, all I did really was I guaranteed that the frame time is positive, just in case, in the weird case that the kit time becomes negative, which was yesterday's super duper obscure, unreproducible bug. Okay, let's see now if I don't skip the intro. Lou was 93, really? Oh, cool. Check it. Check it. The game works. Oh, that's nice. And if I go to the menu, does that all work? No. No. The buttons don't work in the menu. That's weird. Okay, let's get that fixed. All right. This is good. We're off to a good start. Um, Which one of these would be a good way to go? I guess... I guess um, it probably has to do with button release time. I bet you anything. Du, du, du. Render verbosity, turn that off. Controller verbosity, turn it on. What? Ruby was from the 90s too? <laughs> Kavarni. All right, so our button timer is okay. Oh, I bet you anything it's still part of the button timer thing, though. Something's going wrong with that. Oh, uh, see, it clears the button time, so why? Two, it's pressing the down button. It's maybe it's just never releasing the down button. Oh, slow down time. I'm gonna slow it down really slow, and I'm gonna press down. So it went from down state one, which is just pressed down, to two, which is currently pressed down. I'm gonna release it. It should go four eight. It did. It totally did four eight, but it, the the cursor didn't move. So why is that? Okay, so that's the goal is to figure out what the hell's wrong with the menu. Why isn't it moving the cursor when I press down, let go, and all that? Okay, so we'll go to interfaces where that's supposed to happen. Here's the seed menu. Okay, it's going to be in tick, interface tick. All right. 
right, so well, I need to set up a breakpoint so I can see what's going on when. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can set a breakpoint here. Um, if the current ID equals interfaces pause. So for running the pause menu, we'll set a breakpoint. You notice this is kind of one of my patterns here when I do debugging is I do this. I type out a statement and then put a little thing and then put a breakpoint. You can actually put conditional breakpoints, but they don't work so well. They're hella slow. You just, if you really want to try this though, when you're debugging code, you can set a breakpoint and then you go edit breakpoint and you can put up a condition like, okay, I want to break if ID equals, I mean, if ID equals at interfaces, blah, 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 you know, but it's slow as hell. It's so slow. It's something like, it's not even worth doing. If it's, especially if it's in a tight loop. 20% of the vocab. <laughs> really? Singing is difficult. Really? Wow. All right, so I'm going into the pause menu. And got his input. It might be this run button repeat. It is. It's got to be this because we got a negative value. We're going to get a negative value right here. I bet this is it. Is repeating if now minus last input time. Here we go. This should be fabs. Well, that's only repeating though. Oh. What happened? What? Oh. Step out of here. Okay, so we know the repeating is probably going to be wrong. Has buttons down? This might be, this might be true. Has elapsed? Oh, here, this is also elapsed. Greater than button repeat. Okay, this function is just gonna be totally borked if you have a negative time value. So let's fix it. Let's say let's say time is negative. Um, then we're gonna wanna make sure this is fabs here. Now minus last input time. Doesn't really matter if now or last input time is negative. That's still gonna be okay if we fabs it which is the absolute value, floating point, if anybody's wondering. Isn't that weird how when you sing, it sounds good no matter the language, no matter your accent? This also should be fabs when you're calculating elapsed. And then, shit, this might just work now. Let's check it. This video. <laughs> I like the dancing. Nice, it works now. Yay! And this might even work for here now too. Yay! This works too! Whoa, that is so fast. Oh, is it because the repeat is like negative or whatever? I bet it is. But it, hell, it works. Ship it! Okay, good, good. That's fixed. The other thing's fixed. Um. Um, oh yeah, if we go back to kit and I turn back on the regular time, the non-negative time, I wonder if that menu does the repeat, the right speed. Ah. Mm-hmm.
Oh yeah, so this does move at a normal pace. Hmm. Ha! <laughs> okay, let's get this to move at a normal pace. We want to fix the run button repeat, even if it is a negative value. Why does it repeat so fast? Oh, because if now, if now is negative, and the last input time is negative, so like let's say now is negative two, and we subtract the in, the starting time. Let's say it's negative one. That works. Right, so if like if the value is say let's let's say we we got a starting value of negative one point two or now is negative one point two and the last time it was one point one negative. Still that's okay. Why would this be failing? It's the repeat part. It's like repeating hella fast, way too fast. If has buttons down, your start input time equals zero. Start input time equals now. Elapsed also is positive. Oh, here it is. Start input time is, this is like assuming that start input time is positive. So to make this entire function work right, we would just set the um, set now to be fabs. I think we'll see if that works. Fix it bugs, fix it bugs as a result of finding yesterday's super duper obscure bug. If you're paying attention to yesterday's stream, what happened was I was trying to get this door to open. The door was staying closed for a lot of players. Like five different people reported this bug where they stood or they used the meditate skill in front of the big boss door where their meditate skill is supposed to open it. And it didn't work for them. They played the animation, but it didn't do anything. And the thing was on Windows, if you played for a long time, sometimes the time value would overflow and become negative. So I'm fixing everything in the game that would possibly break if you had a negative time value. And look, the button repeat is at a normal speed now. Yay. Hooray. Cool, everything works even with that negative value. All right, this is good. What if, what if we go back to um, human controlled AI? Huh, what then? Does that work? Oh, check it, the start doesn't work. Aha, we found another one. Let's fix that. All right, so we want to skip to the menu. Um, I mean, it's gotta be something to do with the start menu and all that. Uh, gotta be a time value. Scenes. Oh shit, we should start at the very, very beginning. Because you never know what bugs might be lurking in those scenes with negative time. Oh, really, Kovarni? Damn, man. There you go, here's another bug. The wizard food presents isn't here. And I can't press any buttons to get through this. Okay, let's fix that. So scenes, we're gonna start with title layer. You're already here, last input time. Let's find every instance of kid time.
Alright, this shouldn't matter. <laughs> this shouldn't matter. So once again, this is something I should throw into a little block because I'm wondering, is this T variable used elsewhere in the code? I don't think it is. So I'm gonna throw it in a block and we're the one thing we need from this is the double factor. So let's see if everything functions fine without the T variable. Hello, 83. Welcome to the stream, man. Who cares about what? Who cares? So double T. Um, yeah, cool. So I'm glad that doesn't that doesn't break anything. The factor shouldn't matter. Okay, so but something's causing the wizard food presents thing to not appear. Here it is. We're getting the current time again. This could possibly be negative. Probably the thing I should do here is just fabs it. Fabs the now, man. Absolute value on the now. See if this fixes it all. Oh, does it? Does it? And this should be const. All right, let's see if that fixed it. Boop, 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 Nope, didn't fix it. Huh. 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 <laughs> Why is this? Why is this? So what causes that text to appear if strings outside? There it is. Current time minus start scene time. Start scene time. Start scene time also needs to be fabs. Either that or the difference between them should be fabs. On. Current time, current time. Yeah, see, these are gonna be is gonna be all off if we if it's like the blend center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The easiest way to do it is to keep it fabs. Fabs it. Just guarantee that's a positive net time value. <laughs> you you ate a taco and thought it was good. Uh. Also, Raga Bunny, what would you eat if you were in Holland? That's like sort of similar to what, what a taco would be for us. Still no love? Wow. Whoops. Why is this? Why is this? Why? Oh, now equals fabs. Kid time. Now? Now. Start time? Is this it? 
This is the intro layer. Oh, it's the oh, duh, it's the intro layer. I was thinking the other layer. This is the text layer. Text layer is something we don't use. It really doesn't matter, but oh well, it changes anyways. Preview layer? The hell's the preview layer? Oh, the very, very preview layer? I got it. Okay. This is the overworld scene. This is not something I'm going to worry about. Overworld scene is totally for debugging only. All right, that should work. <laughs> Obvious Ogre needs a fabulous Bob Ross secret added. Oh, mutinous. Always you got the greatest ideas. Yes, look at that. Oh, it works. And if we start a game, good. Okay, the major features are all working with this crazy negative time thing. I'm going to check this in. This is good enough. Good enough, man. There's the wa da 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 and here's the da 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 Cap.B, what's up, man? Thank you. This is 500 streams. 500 streams? Wow. It's a lot of streams. They've just gone by. I like streaming. I like getting on here and like, you know. This is kind of, it's not face to face, but at least you're seeing my face. I wish I could see your faces. I hope that one day streaming can be optional. If you want to show your face, you can show your face to the streamer. That'd be cool. But anyways, it's where we can kind of like interact and hang out and stuff. What's up, Tiny Bees? Where did you work before, Songbringer? I've always worked for myself, man. Um, before this, though, I was making game engines and game kits and stuff like that for a while. And so Songbringer is my first game solo that I've ever made. And um, the last game I worked on was Hero Bash before this. I worked on that game with my buddy. And it's a, it's a MOBA for iOS. And it flopped. It was a complete flop, a financial failure. But it's what led me here to Songbringer. It's what it's what caused me to start believing in myself. Like, wait a minute, maybe I can make art. Maybe I can make my own music. Oh wait, I do want to keep that. Just in case I want to debug a few things later on. And you might you might as well keep this too. Nah, screw it. Yeah, like that. Okay. It would turn into a gigantic Skype call. <laughs> nice one, man. Nice one. 83, do you have testers? Yeah, tons of testers, man. Plenty of testers. The game was Kickstarter. This was this is uh, there was a Kickstarter last year in 2015, so there's already a lot of people that have the beta version of the game. They're submitting bugs and stuff like that. It's already on Steam. Um, and if you want to check out more about the game, it's all at songbringer.com, all the links and stuff. Right. You can also play it now if you want to. You can actually, it's a private closed beta, but you can actually pre-order the game and get yourself a Steam key right now. But it's $32. It's $32 if you want to get access to the beta version. It's $16 if you want to pre-order the game. And that either, either one of these gets your name in the credits. But if you're just interested in the game, there's the Steam page here, the link. And um, yeah, you can wishlist it or whatever. Okay, let's check this in. This is a good bug fix. It's a preventative bug fix. This is like proactive bug fixing before, it's, before it happens. Thanks, Kappa. 
Yeah, there's there's plenty of beta testers with the current version. Yeah. Oh, Bafu's not here today. Yeah, what is that? 500 times... That's... <laughs> Uh, spoiler bug fixing. What do you mean? Const auto now. Fabs kit time. It's int max. Let's keep that back to how it was. So it's not even a change in the git log. All right. So scenes. This is where. Um, yeah. So the scene, the start scene, the preview layer. The main menu, all that works, even if the time value is negative. And more importantly, the tick works. God, this was huge. The tick of the entire game failed if the time value ever became negative. So this guarantees that no matter what, the frame time is a positive value. That's no fair. I wanted to ask stupid questions. Man, that was really good. Holy crap. That's so important. I can't believe. Jeez. It takes a little bit. It takes bugs like that. Man, do you guys know that quote for um from Mr. Robot when he talks about bugs? It's so inspiring. I love that quote. I think it's episode two. Um, preventatively fixed bugs that could occur with a negative time value. Cool. All right, check that one off the list. Another one buys the dust. You know what? Let's start Brumble. That would be sweet. Oh, and also I should make sure that controllers work even with, um, yeah. What's Rock's favorite color? Will you ever find true love? When will Sawbringer get a port to graphing calculators? Oh. Such good questions. You deserve a gold star for asking such good questions. Ay ay ay! Get in the hole! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start controller rumble now. Just because it's about freaking time. That's why. Where the hell did I put this rumble card? I want to put this rumble card at the front so I can like check it off when I'm done. Controller rumble, it's in later. Later, it's got, here it is. Controller rumble, boom, we're doing it right now. I'll be fixing this tonight. Some issues with DS4 Windows. If anybody's using a PlayStation 4 controller to play Songbringer on Windows, just disable your DS4 for now. Just don't start it. Close the DS4 app. PS4 works fine without it. All right, let's do this. Resume Windows. Rumble only works on Windows at first because I've already looked at the code for how Rumble works and it's only Windows. Let's go to that. OIS. Shoot, I don't even know where the hell it is. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> uh, Tiny Beast, how do you plan your day out? I don't plan my day out. Morning art, afternoon music, night code, no, none of that. You just work on what feels fun to work on. Yes, I work on what feels fun to work on at that time. Exactly, yes. And I believe in that. I believe in that strongly. Because I believe if you do things that you think are boring, you'll eventually get bored with your project, and then you'll quit on it. Um, so I always just do things that, that sound fun. Even if, it's pr even if it sounds like, logically, that's not the thing I should be working on, I do what sounds fun anyways, because I know 
that when I do exciting things, fun things, it leads me into the state of mind where I can do the boring things and still enjoy them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Eventually the boring things actually become fun things somehow. I don't know how that happens, but it does. What's up, Beach Knee? The 70s fro, man, this is a current fro. This is the 2016 fro right here. How many pages in SP's design document? Zero. Happy trees. Happy trees. Yay. Happy trees. And we'll put a little happy tree next to this happy tree. <laughs> You're still wearing the wig. Yeah. <laughs> what? You, it's not a wig. Oh, don't, I'm sorry. That's your Don't hair. lie. This is my real <laughs> hair. Jeez. She's lying to people there. All right, where is the hell? Where the hell is the OIS code? Core? No. I'm looking for the controller code. I forgot where I put it. App? There it is. App OIS. Steve Tramby, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, what stream did you just join? I don't even know. Okay, force feedback it is. So we're doing controller rumble now. I'm starting this off, finally, finally, finally. Controller rumble. This is only gonna work on Windows, I'm pretty sure. I need to look at some example code. And I'm, there's something here where force feedback is disabled. Let's just search for force feedback. Aha. See this query interface? Doesn't even return anything. Uh, that's, I think because the Mac does not even have a force feedback. Okay, but Windows does. Windows, I'm pretty sure, already has force feedback and a driver and everything to do this, so. Oh, wait a minute. I just realized some. I need to copy this VCX project over from Windows. Copy Windows projects, Windows, Songbringer, VCX Proj to projects, Windows. And that's just should be one little change where we've got log and saves in the project now. Cool. Yay. Check that in. Add saves and log to Windows Proj. Okay, where um, I'm gonna need to definitely look up some example code because I forget how this all works, or even how to initiate it. Here's OIS force feedback. This is where I was already. Damn. Pretty sure. Oh, I'm pretty sure this is all just in the folder. It's all in the OIS folder. Mac has force feedback support via IO kit. It looks like I'll probably have to code that by hand then. Thank you for letting me know, Salad Dogs. Okay. Um. It's in Songbringer, source, OIS, source. All right, so on Mac, I'm pretty sure it's all disabled, but on Windows, here's the force feedback. Oh, that's the good API with sparse documentation. I remember that, yeah. Oh, here's where we're like iterating effect lists and stuff. Okay, I know where to start. I know where to start. Go to the Windows project. 
File modification reload. This is like the matrix reloaded. Oh, did it recognize? Should have. Come on. If I run this, do I have the controller? Wait. Pull it out of the hole, man. Put it back in the hole. Back in the hole. There we go. Connect that to the Windows. There we go. Cool. So I know for sure now my controller, my Xbox controller, is plugged into this Windows VMware thingy. All I want to do is go into the force, or when it starts the input system. Let's close this. Let's close that. Need a lot of this stuff. Oops. Wait. Unpin. Close. Let's open up input controllers. And there's a bit where it queries the force feedback. That's what she said. <laughs> right, I'm just going to make sure that the, the controller is definitely connected and will work in the game. And then we'll proceed from there. Stream number 500. Can you believe it? 500 streams. Yes, all right. The controller's working just fine. Let's have a little bit bigger of a window, hey? It's too tiny. I can't see shit. 840p. Thanks, EGD. Teak, what's up, Teak? How you doing, man? All right, so we want a break point. Why, what's up with this? Why is it all red? Everything's all grayed out, like it's not even in use. What's up with this? It's confused. Visual Studio's confused. Can you believe it? All right, anyways, this is code is active. I just want to go where it's, here's creating the manager, here's destroying the manager, here's setting up, a, there it is. We're getting the force feedback. So I'll set a breakpoint here. Run it to there. This is where we're gonna be querying force feedback. Let's see if it even works. Step through this code. Thank you, T. Halfway to a thousand. You know what? It's going to be another special day coming up. 512. You have good news. Atomic Reconstruction got greenlit. Oh, yeah, dude. Nice. Teeks, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Congratulations. That's so great. So what are your plans with the game? Uh, this happens with VMware sometimes. <clears throat> Windows doesn't like that it's on a network drive. I know, right? When you start with green light or when you get on Steam, dude, it takes like a day or two just to get through all their like all their check boxes and stuff. Oh man. Sometimes it works if I go and like do some stuff in another app and then come back. Let's close Chrome. So I'm working on Rumble now. I want to at least get some code written. Add cards, achievements, and then publish it. Right on, man. 
Oh, you requested day 512, you're written as day 2 the 9th. Got it, man. Done. Oh, shit. Does this have to happen right now? Fifth time's a charm. Steam is all you receive in a cup in five days for a urine sample? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Ay, ay, ay. Well, shit. I can't step through this code, so let's... I want to go find that example code. I know there's something... Wait, I think it's in Songbringer. Hold on. Let's get back to that folder, because I'll need this in a sec. Oh, I hate these tabs. Hey, does oh does anybody know how to use the new tab thing in Mac OS Sierra? There's something special about tabs. I just find them like just like the old tabs. Wait, maybe this is actually a good use of tabs. Keep the source open there. I think in Songbringer current. Clone Geek, what's up, man? Yep. Yep, I've been growing it long lately. You know how it is. It gets annoying trying to cut your hair all the time. It's just great to just let it go. Here we go. OIS version 3. All right, so we've got some demos in here, some example code. This is it. FF console demo. I'm pretty sure this is the force feedback thingamajigger that we want to look at. I'm going to open all this stuff up in TextMate. So I can kind of keep it in one context. Single context, please. Single context. The tabs are now built into AppKit, so apps get tabs for without explicitly coding it. Oh. I know, it gets itchy though, right? It does get itchy. I'm already itchy. So itchy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the upside is the bird might start living in it. Dude, another upside, you can, you can hide joints in it. Oh, you get the tabs for free. Oh. Uh... Yeah, too much sugar. Rocket buddy, you always have too much sugar. Too much sugar. I'm joking. You can have as much sugar as you want, man. You're an adult. Almost. You're almost an adult. If we were like in India, I could tell you what to do. But we're not. So I can't tell you what to do. So you're just going to be able to do whatever you want. Just don't let the bird smoke your joints, man. If you got a bird living in your hair, don't let him smoke your joints. It's not good for the bird. It's not good for you either. Or your joint. Or your hair. Your hair could get lit on fire by that bird smoking the joint. Is, this, is that what we've come to? <laughs> uh, uh. You know I'm joking. Come on, six times the charm. I just want to step through some code, please, Windows. Please. God damn you, Windows. And your network drive flaws. Maybe I can fix this. There's like something here. I set some property. It's supposed to fix it so you can actually load an app from I mean, let's go to the debug. It's linker. General, maybe? There's some attribute you can specify so that it's like totally okay with loading from a network drive. I thought I added it to the debug version. Here it is, swap run from net. Let's see if the old, 
Good old Google can give us some advice here. Swap run net. Part of me wants to be the double party wants to be five again. Right. Swap run net. This is not the link. All right, I was researching this last time. Okay, I'm pretty sure I, I, what I look, look for though was the error message I'm getting. So, can I run without, oh, that's cool. You can run without closing the property page. Nice feature. Did I see Westworld? I tried to watch it the first episode, but it was too disturbing for me. I don't like gore that much. I heard it gets less gory, but I still it was so disturbing I don't even want to chance it. I heard it's a great show though. I heard it's got a cool plot. Oh. Oh, the one time I'm like, hey, I'm all ready to like go and research this bug and this time it works. <laughs> Alright, let's step in here. We're creating we're querying the interface for force feedback. I think there's something in here where it just doesn't work or doesn't do something. Oh, if... Okay, so I'm inside Win32 joystick and it's querying the MFF device and it's null. So it never created the MFF device. So that's why that's not going to work at all. Okay, so there. We've just confirmed a little bit. What's up, Jalapenos, bud? What's up, GZ CEO? Did I buy a Windows 7? Yes, I own Windows 7. I own Windows 7 slash 10. Got upgraded to 10. I'm just running an extra copy of it here in VMware. All right, um, okay, I don't need to look at that. Let's look at the code for how this loads its force feedbacky thing. I guess it's gonna be in Win32 joysticks as CPP. Unnoting coding. Just give me something. Windows 7 best Windows, right? I, I like Windows 7. This is Windows 7 32 bit even. I like the 32-bit one because it's smaller. And it doesn't have the program files x86 or whatever. It's just program files. I like that. Okay, FF device. Starts off zero. Gets deleted. Initialize. I bet it shoots in here. No? Not there. I know I know I saw something in here. <clears throat> oh, you're on a Mac? Cool, yeah. I like I like Macs. Windows 10's pretty good. Oh I know. It's crazy about the auto updates though, right? Every single time I load Windows, which is like once a day or so, it's like updating, updating. Do you want to restart and update? It even pops up while you're playing a game. It's all, hey, hey, you want to restart? Come on, let's restart. So I just uploaded some, I just downloaded some updates, man. Don't you want to restart right now while you're playing this game? It's a good idea, right? Let's just cancel your game. Come on, you're not that into it, are you? SP won't run on 64 bit confirm. Uh... No, it runs on 64. But it doesn't run on 32-bit Linux. <sighs> Linux. Well, I mean, I could do a 32-bit binary and a 64-bit binary, but that just sounds annoying and no one's complained about it. 
Yeah, day 500, right? Total miles milestone. Day 500. It's more. It's more like video 500. This is really stream 500, but this is more like day 600 or 700. You're gonna get a Windows 95 theme. Nice. Ubuntu sweet. There is. I really should do that to ignore updates. Right? I know. Jeez, let me play a freaking game, right? So where is it actually loading the force feedback? Well, here it's creating the force feedback. D oh, so it's the DI enum effects callback? Maybe it's just not getting that effects callback. Where does it do this effects callback? Huh. So our queries interface. So oh wait, so yeah, never I don't see any call to this um query. I'm using this this open source controller library and it's I don't know I don't know about this whole something I remember looking at this before and I saw something that was commented out with the force feedback. And I just gotta find that. What's this though? Here, here, it's querying the effects. Enumerate force feedback, if any. This is in joystick enumerate. Oh, and there's this, okay, let's run this, um, let's do this in, in uh, Windows here. Win32 joystick OIS, where are you? Oh, it's up here. OIS, Win32 joystick. Let's uh, start at the beginning, eh? Eh? Initialize. Breakpoint, set a breakpoint. Yeah, it's totally less than 1%. Yeah, definitely focus on Windows. Time for DOS to make its triumphant return. What am I currently playing? I'm playing Children of Morta. Have you seen that game? It's about a release theme for DOS. Oh my god. I have some experience already making DOS games. I'd probably be pretty good at it. But like, I already know how to get time. I already know how to do a back buffer. DOS hipsters. Uh. Yeah, right? VGA direct pixel access. Single threaded. Totally. <laughs> Hi, Memsis. Uh, what? Teeks? Why does it say that? Oh, because I'm like, I just started debugging it. Thanks, Steam. Okay, so it's not calling is x input, so it's not enumerating right there. Oh, is that what's up? Do I have to use x input or something? Oh, there, it enumerates. Check it. Enumerate. If is x input no good so what are we doing here huh get capabilities Let's see what kind of capabilities we have failed it just failed right away no it didn't fail but it didn't do anything I tried to step into that oh it's because this M joystick is a what it's a D input 8 so it got its capabilities its capabilities are inside this MDI joy caps here these are the caps. FF sample period, FF min time resolution. It's like D input eight or whatever this is built against. It's not. A, it's not giving any. Wait, I don't know what it needs to have force feedback. Yeah, C and ASM for sure. Totally. I 
zero DOS games and see. Kobarni. Check out the stream link. Does not support Russian language. Right now. <laughs> Mr. Frank, bro, 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 your boats. <laughs> Uh, I need four, I need one more. So we have forty-two. Totally, you're right. Check the check it right now. All right, what's up with that, huh? I thought I already replied to that. Was that an old one? Hold on. I was chatting with this guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Russian language? I thought I replied to this. What's that? What do you want me to look at this for? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Frenick. I saw that. Thanks a lot. Alright, alright, alright. So. We queried direct input 8 for the capabilities of my Xbox 360 controller and what happens with the force feedback? Does it actually say, yeah, you have force, here's the enumerate effects, aha, aha. So it's going to call this direct input function enum effects. We got our effects callback. I'm going to want to set a breakpoint there. Where was that? Shoot, can we make this any bigger, please? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Right on. I just resized the window and it put me right where I wanted to go in the code. Sweet. Okay, there's our enum device objects callback. And the line of code we we're on right now, where is that again? Uh, not there. Wow, where was this? Ah, how do you see where the current line you're on? Is it? Is this it? No. Oh, here it is. It's right above it. Pfft. Duh. So yeah, di enum effects callback. Di enum device objects callback. Wait, where the hell is this one? Oh, it's not there. Well, no freaking wonder. What Zork? What do you mean Zork? What Zork? What's up, King Nothing? Don't leave the stream for that simple reason. What's what?
I'm gonna grab for this DI Enum effects callback. God, I thought, why wouldn't this be written? Why do I always get the arguments for grab wrong? Yeah, what's up, baby? Dinner's ready in 10 minutes. Woo! Cool. You hear that, everybody? Dinner's ready in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only 10 minutes left on today's stream because I'm going to have dinner. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's right here. It's right there in freaking Win32 Joystick, man. Chase. DI enum uh, effects callback. There it is. Set a breakpoint here. Okay, so we want to step in if possible. No. Oh, there, it just didn't work. Nothing happened. We called the enum effects, but it didn't. It didn't work. Oh, what? I got a lot of breakpoints now, but this is the one. This is the one right here. Yeah, you should definitely play Zork, man. You should check it out. At least play a good fifteen minutes of it. No, no, no. The game is not translated to Russian. But there is a Russian translator that I had, but he just, I haven't, he hasn't replied in a long time. So I need to either get that person to translate it into Russian, or I need to find another Russian translator. All right, each knee, see you, man. See ya. Okay, let's delete these other breakpoints and do this again. Is this really what's going on? It's not even it's not even jumping into that function. Direct input eight's just ignoring us. Okay, we can disable this one. So yeah, we want to see right there, enum effects. DI enum effects callback this, DF all. Let's look up this function. Direct input eight enum effects. Is that what it was called? Effect enumeration. Here's Microsoft's documentation about it. Let's go just make sure that it works or make sure that it is not working. One more step through. Imagine having to program in Chinese, right? That'd be hard. Oh, that would be great, Kovarni. That would be great. Oh, Kavarni. So, Kavarni, if you really do want to do a translation, that that would be awesome. Let me. Uh, I'll type my email address so you can, so we can get in touch. I really. Do, I don't use the Twitch mail that much, so it'd be better if we could do a. Um, if we could do email, if that's okay with you. But yeah, if you really do want to do it, just send me an email. I'm nat at wizardfood.com.
All right, we're about to call this function. I step in, nothing happens. Uh, it's not just taking a sec. Nope. Yeah, so there's the problem. It's not it's not getting this callback. This enum effects thing. We should be getting this callback, right? LP effect info. Hmm. Direct input eight enum effects callback not called. Has anybody experienced this? Stack Overflow come to my rescue. Yes. No. Not JavaScript. Thanks, Kobarney. Oh, King Nothing, you might be totally right about that. But, no, I think, I think, no, I think on, even on, I know I've run this before on Windows, on my Windows 10, um, actual partition, you know, like I, I reboot and boot into Windows, and I've seen that it, it reports that it didn't even get a, a force feedback device there. But you might be right, I might actually need to run it there just to figure out actually what's going on, because this is kind of painfully slow to do this. It doesn't like look like we have any kind of specific advice here from Stack Overflow. Damn, I love Stack Overflow, but it didn't come to my rescue today. Will I be streaming over the holiday? Probably not on the holiday, but around the holiday, yeah. So, okay, well, at least I can kind of understand what DirectX is trying to do here. Returns information about the support offered by the device. Okay, clearly. Supported effects and created effects. The supported effects is basically a type. Uh huh. Uh huh. So you have to see if this effect is supported and then create the effect. So this is what I was looking for. Effect object enumeration, or was that, wait, what's the difference? Uh, when you need to examine or manipulate all the effects you have created. Okay, so the objects are when you have actually created them. Wait, why did that? Uh. Yeah, I know it works though. I know that um, in, the, in the VM, my controller does work. Right, it, I know that that at least works. So I think I think this is kind of a legit way to test this out. It's just like not returning anything for some reason. It's not calling that method. Setting the values of a DIFX structure. The enum effects method requires a callback function. So why is it not getting called? Direct input, hmm? This is documented with the placeholder name, di enum effects callback, but you can use a different name if you prefer. Tell me about this. Right, this probably has the right signature, but let's check. LP 
CDI effect info. No, not this one. This one. LP CDI effect info. Yep. And then an LP void PV ref. All right. Ah. Huh. Are you going to get socks for Christmas? Definitely. Why are you using direct input instead of X input? I'm just using the library that was. You know what? Maybe is there's some way to trigger that. I'm using the open source library called OIS because I didn't want to write all this myself. Um, I didn't want to spend the time doing that. But there, it does have X input support, so I wonder why it, it prefers X input. Because I know, I think I'm compiling with X input. Let's check that. Pretty sure I have X input live. Yeah, I've got X input live. It we're time to eat. All right. All right, guys. That's the end of the stream. Scissor, what's up, man? Day 500. 118th over 9. Got to get over 9,000. Uh, yeah, I think it's using DI as a fallback option. Like, it's it's got X input and DI. But that's a good suggestion, Salad Dogs. I'll be looking at that later on tonight and stuff. So thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, Lazy Shark. See you, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks a lot for watching.